SMTAI 2019 in Chicago. Um, I'm joined by Ivy Allen from Kick, yes. Michael from Aegis, and Joel Scutchfield from Co Young. Thanks for joining us, guys. I've spoken to you at various times. Well, I haven't spoken to you actually yet. Yeah, be happy so. um, Now, we've been talking for years about smart factories, connected factories, um, CFX, which you're both on the um, panel for. You know each other quite well. We do. <laughs> um, and we were, Joel and I were just having a conversation just before you arrived about exactly this, how you know, acceptance is actually starting to come within the industry because AI kind of joins the dots up for people. Um, so, and Michael, you, you know, last week at What's New Electronics Live in the UK, you get a fantastic keynote talking about, uh, we've got this slight problem that <laughs> Industry 4.0 has become a jaded term, you know, it's been taken over by marketeers, so that, um, You've almost got to do a little bit of reassurance to everyone that actually this this does deliver. This this does work. So actually, from your your point of view, you um, I mean you gave a presentation this morning, I think, on the latest with CFX. So um, what's what's the state of the union as um, you presented this morning? Things are beginning to avalanche. I think um, this is like the quiet before the storm, where machine vendors are considering what their roadmap is going to be kind of meeting the customer demand because we've seen a couple of very large companies now come out and say look we'd like a new line or a whole factory now to be CFX because they believe you know we want to have native machine connections without the cost we want to have a reliable source of information and they just want to make it happen now enough of the talking let's just do it but it's like an avalanche because in any one particular factory you have many different kinds of machines from many different vendors and then you have to hook it up with the software as well. So doing it for the first time is quite interesting uh, because it's not like a normal interface, there's not that exchange of technical specifications. We all just adhere to the standard. So it's really exciting now to see people moving forward and actually having these projects in play. Yeah, and that, and that is absolutely true. In fact, Michael and I were uh, at a conference in Michigan back in June, right, where we both spoke, a Smart Factor conference, and we had uh, several customers stand up and, and ask point blank, where are you with your readiness? We, we're ready to go. We, we have a project plan. We want to get started. And uh, so that's great to see, right? And, and as we talked about earlier, that's what drives this whole process, right? The customers are, are, are the ones that are going to hold our feet to the fire as, as vendors and manufacturers of software and machines to, to give them what they need, to do all those things we talked about previously. I think you were right though also about um, Industry 4.0 was sort of a little bit more standoffish. And, um, and I, I, I agree with you, especially some years ago, especially here in the U.S., um, I think that's one of the great advantages of the CFX because um, smaller companies that envision this to be an enormously expensive and lengthy process can get started. Um, and, and same thing when, when I was in Michigan, one of the things I try to talk about is the opposite. Everyone thinks big picture, lots of money, and I have to work my way down. Whereas with CFX, you could get started here and understand what the data is that you want learn and then start to grow with that. So um, I think it gives a lot, especially smaller companies, an opportunity of working in that arena and getting started. And and I hope more than anything is that they'll start to realize the benefits that come with it. It isn't just a another standard. It isn't just another process. It isn't you know something that's being forced on them. But there is ultimately an enormous benefit to them with quality improvement and the knowledge that they can gain to take action. So I'm hoping that. I think people recognize CFX a lot more at this show than they did last right. year at this oh, show. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's <laughs> the same thing growing groundswell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people are, people get it probably now. Yeah, Yeah. because you know, it's, it's no surprise, I guess, that the two machine vendor, I class you as a machine vendor, I mean, you're both adding creating a huge amount of data, which is the essence of Industry 4.0. However, in many companies, that stays in isolation. 
it stays on your respective machines. And it's unbelievable how much value there is there once you get that data out. And so CFX is the mechanism for, as you said, the smallest companies. Just the mom and pop shops who have a developer in the family even can take the CFX data from both of these machines and start to create something of value, visibility. And even the largest companies who you know, want to have a look across their hundreds of sites along, around the world, it's one solution to fit all. And that's the great thing about it. It brings out the value and enables it for everyone. And it, also being able to retrofit, because you were saying the other week that you know, actually you can integrate existing machinery with a bit of work and a bit of hardware into a CFX workflow. Which, you know, to a big, if you put, say you're putting in a massive new line, then fine, you can go down the route straight away from day one, and it it's all starts off on a, from a level playing field. But for people who, you know, that investment, they can't do that kind of investment to be able to integrate some of the machines they already have in that. That's a huge plus, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, we've seen uh, Hella. They've come out and said that every machine that they've basically ever made will become CFX compatible natively. Uh, for others, there will be a small little bit of hardware, like Seiko are making a little thing called Shoebox in Italy. Um, and there will be others, many others, who will be able to do this. So that existing equipment, you can get the full value from within a digital factory. And that includes people as well. I mean, I'm not saying a little box on people's heads, but you know, being able to give them augmented reality and include them in the digital flow as well. CFX goes around all of these things. I mean, we were talking, you know, Joel, just before about this, you know, that you know, it has to come from the, the top down as well. You know, the, the businesses have to, have to get it. They have to understand that, you know, that the amount of data and the kind of data they get might mean they have to take a long, hard look at some of the preconceptions they had about their, you know, the way, the efficiencies in their business. And the efficiencies may not be in the areas they expected. So it's, a, it's kind of a a black and white uh, look at where somewhere is, but do you feel now that because people get it, they will get on board with that? I had an interesting conversation with a customer of ours yesterday, and uh, they recently implemented SPI, and they were one of those that thought for many years that they really didn't need it, right? I'm building good product, I'm not having field That's returns, right. I'm okay, I'm okay. With the implementation of the tool, and more importantly, the data, that is provided to them, they've basically been able to confirm the performance of their screen printer, which is a, an older machine, mm -hmm. to the point where they now have confidence that they don't have to go out and replace that machine as soon as they thought they were going to have to replace it. Right? So again, the data is providing the information to provide the confidence to now basically redirect how they, how they spend their money, how they allocate the the, uh, the budget. So I think that's a piece that that's another byproduct. Now, the printer manufacturers might not like to hear that, right? <laughs> but but that is again, this is what data is doing for us. It's, it's making the customer overall uh, more efficient, reducing their costs, reducing their need in some cases to spend money where maybe they, they otherwise thought they really had to. It's uh, knowledge that they would have had to dig for, yeah, and right. maybe didn't even know. Yeah. Now it's now it's awareness for them and in, in reality they're saving them because now yeah, they have the right. knowledge they're able to make that that a piece of equipment more efficient yeah. right and now they're not spending the money on a new one right. as quickly as they have to and you're right it may make the uh, the uh, manufacturer unhappy but I mean even for our systems when you have the knowledge of what's being produced through a reflow oven you have the ability to a make sure that you that you are able to improve your quality and it gives you uh, more longevity with the oven as well, right? Because now I can make the best use of it. I don't have to necessarily invent, invest in something newer. Um, and again, being, ret you know, as, as CFX is retrofitable, it, it, it makes the best of all worlds for people. And I think that beneficial aspect of it is what still hasn't been put forward uh, enough, yes. mm -hmm. right? What's the benefit to me? What's the yeah. financial benefit of me yeah. um, spending the time to, to implement it? Yeah, it's it, it's kind of difficult because CFX itself is a mechanism that provides the opportunity 
to make a benefit. It doesn't provide benefit in itself. Right? And you could have a digital factory without CFX. It would cost you an arm and a leg, right. and it exactly. would take years to create, exactly. but you could do it. So what CFX does is reduce that time, reduce that cost, increase the opportunity. And you know, even for your screen printer, um, you're looking at you know how good is this old machine working? I'm going to use the SPI to give me that feedback. Sure. Now, maybe there's something which is not quite right. Is that the machine's issue, or is it the paste, or is it you know, any one of a Anything dozen in the other process. things? That's right. So it's very nice to understand where the real root cause of potential quality issues, or let's say opportunities to improve the process, where they lie. And it's very easy to do that. And it's almost like we've had this for the whole time, but it's been hidden inside the process. And suddenly by this connection. So there is the value of the connection, the ability to do this. And every time we speak, we come up with more ideas. It's just <laughs> incredible. It's yeah. The data is there. It's, you just got to get to that actionable piece, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and as we talked about earlier, AI is going to do a lot of that going forward in the background. But until that time, if we can get to that data more quickly, just through the use of the interconnectivity that CFX is providing, even in a manual context, we're still making significant improvements above and beyond what we otherwise would have been able to, to accomplish. Sure. I mean, I'm intrigued to know, I mean, has CFX developed the way you thought it would develop? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, I think it's actually much better than I, th I thought. Um, there's a there's a, a piece of CFX that was developed um, with the team that uh, is, is is basically a guidebook um, and makes it so easy for people to get involved in it to be able to look and it's it's, it's English you know it's not some special code I mean of course the person has to have some knowledge of code but um, the fact that that was developed is was a huge leap into making it acceptable for companies to join. Um, you've heard me say this many times, but I mean, the praise really needs to be to be there for the people that were involved in that pro part of the project. It was truly um, a game changer. Right. Mm. Yeah, I would completely agree with that because I think technically it's not been as much of a challenge as you would think. Right. Because we haven't had disagreements about what we call things and how we name things. People have been willing to work together. And that, for me, was the thing that was the most surprising. You know, I had high expectation on the technology. I, I took that as a given. <laughs> but people working together, contributing, you know, competitors in the same room, talking to each other on how to communicate. I, five years ago, impossible. Two years ago, really, we're going to do this? Now it's... We do it every day. It's yeah. it's really helping the industry. It's helping the customers of each of our respective products, and that is taking the whole thing forward. Yeah. I mean, that it wasn't easy to get to that point, though, was it? You know, it sounds like a natural progression. But I mean, from an equipment manufacturer point of view, it's a bit of a leap, isn't it, to actually okay, I'm going to sit down with well, competitors and see how we can yeah, collaborate. Consider the fact that. I think many of us have seen this coming to some capacity, right, to, to, to some degree. So obviously planning's taking place internally to kind of set a course for, for each of our own paths, right? Now we're acting, asking all these companies that have set their course, maybe not in the same direction, to collectively come together and come up with a course that benefits everyone. So, yeah, certainly I, I, I can understand that. Yeah, it, I mean, it is a big yeah. for for everybody to kind of, for lack of a better term, kind of put their ego aside, put yeah. their put their put their planning aside, and not necessarily come to the table with a specific agenda right. that 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 it's my way or no way, and, and again, be cooperative in that. In I that mean, regard. we've all had the ability to output data yeah. forever. I mean, we've been outputting data for more than 25 years yeah, yeah. now, but it's being used differently. And having that standard allows people to move it to the next level, right? right? But very easily. Yeah, I mean, the thing about CFX is that the common ground that we're all on is to create a mechanism, a tool. How we then go forward and utilize that tool to create specific value for machines or for software systems, that's up to us. 
So then we become competitive again. We become, you know, pushing That's the envelope, the trying to build the most value. But at least we're doing it on common ground. And the customer is never going to suffer as a result of having to say, well, do I have this type of system or do I have that type of system? What's compatible with this and that? That works, that doesn't. No, none of that. Let's all compete on merit. And we're all creating industry 4.0 smart values in the machines. And those are what the customers want. So to my mind, the, the one stumbling block that is still there is a security issue. Well, we were talking mm. the other week again about, there's, again, people have to buy into, okay, I'm going to allow these machines to connect to each other, we're going to trust it to be on the cloud, these sort of things. Is that, how big a problem is that? I mean, I know you, you, know, you were talking about this last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the biggest irony in the industry that we've not really talked about um, because there are many companies who say, you know, on the one side in production, I want to connect everything. You know, look, I can get so much value and data. And then you go to the IT guys and they say, <laughs> no, right. it's exactly. not going to happen. Right. It's because yeah, it's of the so security funny. issue. They don't understand. And it's different every every company is a little it's bit true. different really in how they do it. That, yeah, that's a, you know, that's a yeah. key thing as well, isn't it? It's not, you know, it varies where you are. And, you know, it's new and old machines. It's not you know, restricted to anything. Um, they just don't know what's going to happen if those machines were to make their way onto a network. They may go outside and access something and a virus would come in on top. They simply cannot afford the risk. The nice thing about CFX, and it may have been an accident, I have to say, <laughs> was that all of the data from CFX, so all of your predictive maintenance, your materials, your performance, all of it, Absolutely all of it goes through one single computer port. Yeah. So that means that you can lock down the whole of the network and make it as secure as you like. Just stop everything except one port. That one port, you allow data through. Now the question is, so aren't viruses going to come through that port? No, because CFX is a standard. The standard has the specific definition of the data content. It's not like other standards that say, oh, I've got perhaps a car and the characteristics of the car or this fuel consumption or that or the other. It's not that. It says this is specifically the automobile and that language is defined in the standard. So a piece of software can sit on that port, listen to the data that's going through and be absolutely 100% sure that everything is as it should be. If anything tries to get in with it, it's blocked. And the customers themselves can write that software. It's easy to write that software so that they have full ownership and control and responsibility. So they're not looking to a third party. So this is a potential solution for this security issue. Do, uh, so, you know, you, you can allay those fears um, and it's, you know, this is a really solid way of allaying those fears. Not, you know, trust us, don't yeah. you know, this is a, these are the facts. Then, once people buy into it, you've then got this angle where you kind of have to change a little bit the way, okay, we've, we've got this information, how are we going to manage this? Okay, the machines can auto correct, they can, you know, hopefully manage themselves with AI, those are things we can, you know, so the aim of that is to get that speed of change and correction quicker so that you, you know, it, it reduces every level and increases efficiency. The learning mode. Yeah. But then you've got your workforce, and again, as I was talking the other week, we've got another opportunity where you can allow your workforce to multitask. They can, you know, if you feed them right information, whether it's augmented reality or however you do it, they can then become operatives that can do a lot of different things. They can be doing QA one day, they can be doing, you know, soldering another day, at least, you know, it, it, it's, 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 the ability is there. Is that an, the, one of the next challenges of getting businesses to get their heads around that? I'm not sure that that's something that we've talked about within the CFX group. Um, it's, 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 we talk about where do we go from here? Yeah. What's the next layer? Um, what's, how else can we be involved in other parts of manufacturing, not necessarily specifically SMT right now? Um, but I, I do believe that the next step is, like you were alluding to, was it's the usefulness of the data. Right? So now you're making decisions, you're making better decisions, and then 
after that you get into the optimization and the efficiency. And that's where the people are going to benefit from that because part of what our goal is is to also eliminate downtime, right? Because you're not searching all over to get an answer. And so if you have less downtime, you're saving money, but you're also having the opportunity now to devote your time and your energies to something else. And maybe that something else is taking the information I learned and becoming more efficient. So I think it, it kind of is a balance. Yeah. It kind of ties into what we talked about yesterday and also a little earlier, the whole people phenomenon, right? right. Finding good people. When you get somebody that's good and you can hang on to them, now that's, that's the, the, the perfect storm for doing just that, right? And it kind of goes back to the concepts that we were talking about in the late 80s and the early 90s, a flexible workforce, right? right, right you know, right. okay, so something's going on over here that uh, for whatever reason the process isn't completely balanced or, or whatnot, you, you, you flex to this part of the line and you do that. And then you come back and you do this when, when that's needed. But again, you have to have that, that level of people to, to be able to do that as well. But, but I think that's absolutely true. And again, the perfect scenario to apply the the concept and, and the now information and data that's available. It's, it's given to them in a way that they can do that. Right? And, and that's something which is really a revolution in manufacturing because right now, if we're looking at the workforce, I mean, they're very experienced in what they do. They're probably not going to be in the industry working for so much longer. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, that depth you of knowledge... You're saying we're all getting old? Is that what you mean? Well, it's a biological fact, unfortunately. I mean, we'll solve that problem next time. Um, but yeah, <laughs> next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the way that machines are evolving, I mean, just take a look at your yeah. machine, for example. Yeah. The know-how that used to be in a guy's brain to understand, he would just look at a circuit board and he would know instinctively there's something right or something wrong with this. Those kind of people take years and years and years of encouragement and, and experience. Now the software just does it because that know-how is inside the machine. There is know-how inside your software. There is know-how inside our software. So the requirement for people coming in the, into the industry is a little changed. I mean, you still need your experts, as do we. But in the, the grand scheme of manufacturing, you now have a role of a human, which is far more less deep dive and more kind of flexible. So as you said, you can ask them to do different things based on a general skill level. So they could be doing maintenance on the machine. They can be doing you know, all the quality checks, assembly, the whole thing. But now we have freed them from this burden of having to be specialists in these areas. And so this is where the know-how within the machine is very, very important. And how the connection of those people to all of the machines is very important. One of the things I always try to, to talk about is you have a, a person or an expert in the factory and maybe there was a, a problem one day and that person did their due diligence to uncover what the problem was and uh, is now on vacation and that problem arises <laughs> again. And that means that the, the person who's there today has to go through the same process once again to determine what the problem was and fix it. If, if all of that is documented, Right now, there's a huge time savings again because if that person is not there, someone can have at their fingertips the knowledge of what transpired, what was done to fix it, and move on quickly. So you become less dependent on some of us older folks <laughs> that have it all back here, right? Yeah, yeah. So you had a meeting this morning with CFX group, didn't you? Um, any nuggets of information um, that you can share with us? We have a new version of CFX about to hit the streets, 1.1. Um, um, this is currently out for industry review. So the hundreds of companies within the committee are looking at the additions that we've made. So we're inclusive now of more detail of more machines and this is a plan that we intend to continue with. Because CFX, even though everything is very specifically defined, it's flexible in that because it's a consensus-based standard, we can add things along as we go. And this is really important uh, because we want to be inclusive of every type of machine, every type of process, even ones we haven't dreamed about yet. And so, it doesn't have to be a machine. It could absolutely. be a manual process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're looking at additive manufacturing, for example, fabrication of PCB, 
um, so many different areas, robotics, etc., that you know haven't yet made it into the standard, yeah. but they should be included as well. So we have 1.1 for industry review that should be out by the end of the year. Already now we've got a shopping list of 1.2, <laughs> yeah. and that uh, for every six months basically we bring that out. So it's it's just continuing to go. And, so and we'll have a line again um, at Productronica ah, right, yes. in, in, yeah. uh, in conjunction yeah. with Hers, uh -huh. and uh, we'll be doing some demonstrations there yeah. and people could get more information, yeah. um, actually yeah, we'll see what's well. going on yeah. and then, you know. I think, I mean, that when you, when you did the one at uh, what's going on at Trix, hmm. live, we had a, a CFX, short CFX line there. It makes so much sense when you see it running, doesn't it? Hmm. Yes. And it, are you finding, you know, are you finding there's more access, I mean, we say the movies, but, you know, generally you don't have to sell the whole concept now. It's, mm. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you can sell, yeah. as you said, there's different levels. Yeah. Of, you, you, you kind of have to start with the big picture, but then you have to break it down yeah. exactly. into, into manageable bites. Yeah. yeah, solving the pain point of the day. Exactly. And that's what we're going to ask people that, who come to the show. Uh, I think it was your idea. But we <laughs> to have, do a questionnaire <laughs> at the end of seeing the line. Like, you know, why haven't you connected your machines? Do you want to connect them? Yes. Why haven't you done it? Is it too difficult? Is it too expensive? Um, and then we'll see, okay, now you've seen CFX. Let's have a look at your answers. Yeah. Now it's basically available natively from your machines. What's stopping you now? What values do you expect from it in terms of productivity, better on-time delivery, quality? You know, they can really start to see the impact of the opportunity that CFX provides. It gives us the opportunity also of providing the appropriate information to them. So, um, you know, this is how I get started and this is the benefits that I get out of it. Um, and, and, and to be able to address their specific questions as well so that it's not so much of an unknown. It's not, mm -hmm. yes, it's over there, someday I'll get to quick it. Quick start yeah, guide, Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, that's, I think you called it should. that, right? No, no, I didn't, but we will oh, use maybe that. Mark, <laughs> I think Mark may have called it a quick okay. start guide. Yeah, yeah no, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to seeing both of product Tronica then, yeah? <laughs> so, well, thanks for talking, guys. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's fantastic listening to how it's developed and it's speeding up. You're going to be so busy, basically. <laughs> well, we hope so. Yeah. <laughs> All in a good way. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Thanks so much for joining us. It's very special. Pleasure. Thank okay. you. Thank you.